A man is a fool to live under the rule of a woman as cruel as a bull with Who's the fool when love is cruel? His whole world will crash when he's under the lash of a tongue that can slash like the bull whip. Can't he see he won't be free? Wrapped in her arms, he's trapped by her charms. The heart of this man is her toy. Her sweet angel eyes, completely disguise the part of her plan to destroy. Pity the fool who lives under the rule Of a woman as cruel as a bull whip What's to do if this is true? Till he takes his stand, he'll be hers to command And will carry the brand Of the bull whip, bull whip, bull whip. This is the world that has been my whole life, traveling the freighter trail from the Kansas railhead, following the buffalo migration north into Wyoming, where our hunters wait for the final kill. It's a world of buffalo hides, food and supplies, carved with blood and guts and sacrifice to conquer the savage cruelty of Indian tribes. And carved, too, with a hijacking greed of competitors and their hired gunslingers. I'm a woman, and it's always trouble when a woman invades the territory they call exclusively a man's world. In it, they say a woman is not made for buckskins and bullwhips, but for a thing called love. <laughs> love, just plain slavery to some egotistical male. This empire was created for me. A vast chain of hide and freight stations, and great lines of freighters forging ahead of what our crew calls the boss wagon train. I was cradled in those freight wagons. My schoolroom was in them. My British tutor called it molding a lady out of rawhide. Well, fortunately, the rawhide is still there. And I need it now, being forced into marriage with a condemned man. Only take a moment, just to make sure. What's the matter, Daly? You getting lonesome? A friend of mine was supposed to meet me here in Abilene. Name's Poto. <laughs> He's sure gonna get an awful joke when he shows up, ain't he? I tell him goodbye. When he comes looking for me, give him this note, will you? Sure, I'll, I'll see he gets it. Thanks. Sounds like he's in the right mood. Just right, I'd say. All clear here? You alone? Yeah, all set. Sheriff's in a poker game. All right, I'll bring him right in.
All right, Judge. Anything you say goes. I'll keep it quiet. What they throw you in for, Judge? I'm just a visitor, son. I'm here to help you. A little late, aren't you? Mm, no, there isn't much time left, is there? Just half a day, tonight, and then sun up before you know it. Maybe there won't be any sun up. Well, around here we hang them with sun or without sun. You killed a citizen in cold blood. Self-defense and you know it. That fast trolley of yours. There was a railroad, and if I ever saw one. Oh, no, let's not go all over that again, son. The fact remains, you're going to hang. You didn't come here to remind me of that. What's this got to do with that, that Indian and woman out there? Uh, they represent your one chance to save your neck. I'm listening. All you've got to do is marry that young woman. Marry her? I have here a document, which I've already signed, that reverses my decision in your case on the grounds of new evidence of self-defense. Want to look? Yeah, it does. With it, you can walk out of here a free man if you agree to marry that young woman right now. And then, forget her. Travel your own road and never show your face in Abilene again. Who is she? Oh, a widow with two small children. Stopped off here en route to Boston with her dead husband's body. Poor little thing. She's going to lose that husband's estate and will be absolutely penniless if she doesn't marry again immediately. Yeah, that's a peculiar chap. But that's what his will says. Imagine a low-down scoundrel like that. That's a real sad story. No, really, like I said, she, she was a stranger here in Abilene and then she came to me for help. It was my idea that the condemned man might be the immediate solution to her problem. <laughs> of course, two days ago, we didn't have a condemned man. That's what happened. Why I'm set to hang. It's a chance to save your life. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. What's her name? Well, now, if, if you never know her full name, you can never, even with this paper in your pocket, come up with any complications that might make difficulties for me. Now, can you? You've thought of everything, haven't you? Including the marriage license, which has already been signed by your wife-to-be and witnesses. Of course, you'll never know where it's recorded, so don't get any ideas. And I'll marry you by your first names. You will sign it blind, right down here. That'll make it legal for the little woman when she gets to Boston to collect her inheritance. You know, Judge, I got to figure that if I say no, you're going to be out an awful lot of money. No, no, I'll uh, just get her another single man and you'll um, hang per schedule. Well, I guess a wedding ring is better than a noose. Especially since you can forget the ring, too. Now, here's your freedom. When it's all over and we're gone, take it and walk out. Come on, let's get it over with. Precisely what I had in mind. Only, uh... Don't forget. She knows nothing about how I got her a condemned man. She thinks you're going to hang. <laughs> Wait here, Pinehart. Come in, my dear, come in. Oh, well, uh, yes, uh, this is Steve, my dear. And you'll have to know her just as Julia. Please know how grateful I am. 
I'm sorry about not revealing my full name to you, but I'm sure you'll agree it's wise to follow the judge's advice. He's been so kind to me. No point in my knowing who you are. Won't do me much good where I'm going. Let's get on with it, Judge. My dear. Take her hand. Do you, Julia, take Steve here to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. And do you, Steve, take Julia here to be your lawfully wedded wife? Yeah, sure, Judge. Here. Place this on her finger. With this ring, I, Justice Rufus Parkingham Carr, hereby pronounce you man and wife. That does it. Now, Steve, if you'll just sign this marriage license down here. Just like I said. my dear. Thank you, Steve. The children and I will pray for you. Just a minute. It's customary for the groom to kiss the bride. Stick around town till photo shows up. Oh, no, you don't. The horse is across the street, all saddled up and waiting. You get over there fast and keep riding. Why? Judge's orders. It's going to have enough trouble around town explaining your release to the citizens without having you here to complicate it. Yeah, that figures. Well, I'll photo I'll see him at Jesse's trading post on the Chisholm Trail. Sure, I'll tell him. Nope, no Steve Daly ever checked in here. Are you sure Steve said the Abilene Hotel? Well, it's that Steve Daly they got in jail fixing to hang come tomorrow sun up. Hang? Yep, for murder. Why, that's crazy. Steve ain't no killer. Where's that jail at? Just up the street. You forgot my gun. I didn't forget. It stays here. Judge's orders. He says if you're unarmed, you'll stay out of trouble till you clear town. He could be right about that. He never misses. Good luck, Daly. Hey! You two boys, get him inside. Come on, man, I want to fight. What was the shooting, Judge? Oh, just a couple of the cow hands whooping it up. Nothing to worry about. You're a liar. You're worried it might be some poor fool who can't pay you off before he gets to trial. Oh, no, Cheyenne, is that fair? I mean, after the way I set you up in this deal? Kept all this in your hands? You're getting well paid for it. Three shares in this company, plus 5,000. Fine, Hawk, get the saddlebags and carriage. I'll be along in a minute. I'll give you three more shares if you arrange to let Steve Daly escape before sunup. What? You, you, you must be out of your mind. I don't like unpaid debts. Any kind. Yes, but, but, but Cheyenne, this is crazy. All, all you need or want is a dead husband. Stop Otherwise, you're going to... Stop listen to me. There's nothing he can do to hurt either one of us. He'll be a fugitive running from that noose. That's the price he's paying for his freedom, and he'll know it. I never thought of that. 
You're right, my dear. Brilliant as always. Of, of course, I'll try to arrange it. Trying isn't good enough. Do it. Yes, my dear, of course. If you value your hide as much as you do cash, you'll keep this little matter strictly between us, understand? Of course, my dear, certainly. I'll lock up and give the key to Paul Morgan at the bank. Why, certainly, my dear. What happened? That extra shot. Did the deputy get my reversal paper off Daly's body? Couldn't. Deputy died too quick. Died? Mm-hmm. Instead of Daly. I missed. Had to duck out when that pal of his showed up and stopped the deputy with a bullet. Carp, you've got to get my paper back. I'll be ruined if Daly ever shows it. Look, I paid you $1,000 to kill him. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you $5,000 more if, if, if you finish him and get my paper back. I've got to have it back. You've given it to me. Well, that's, that's all right, that's all right, but are you sure you can catch up with him? I can catch up with anybody I got a mind to. We'll see. Yes, but Carp, you haven't said... I'll set... get on Daly's trail tomorrow. No hurry. What's going on? Hotel man says you're supposed to hang tomorrow for murder. That's right. They framed me into defending myself and threw me in the jail and I had to get married to get out. <laughs> Imagine me. I thought you said you got married. I did. Married? Steve, you feeling all right? I never felt better in my life. But, but, but look, fella, you was, you was in jail, not in a, a, a church. You're Steve Daly, always running away from hot little mavericks with wedding rings in their eyes. That's crazy. Nobody gets married in jail. Well, I did. The judge who sentenced me arranged it. Then he gave me a signed piece of paper reversing his verdict. That's where they tried to dry ghost me to get it back. But, but Steve! Yeah? You forgot to tell me who you got married to. I don't know. You don't know? That's right. But that ain't possible. It is in Abilene. How can a man marry a woman and not know who she is? She's got a name, ain't she? Yeah. Mrs. Steve Daly. All right, boys, just keep your hands on your saddle horn. But we lost you. You don't have to worry, Daly. We're not the law. Then who are you? Make any difference? Yeah, it makes a difference. But uh, I'm not going to argue about it. Let's go. Where are we going? Well, now, I don't figure you want to argue about that either. Mister, I guess you're right. Let's go. Come with me. Take him over to the bunkhouse. No, sir. Where Steve goes, I go. It's all right, Spoto. If the man wants it private, he can have it private. I thought I'd seen everything. Staff and I welcome you, Mr. Daly. I'm John Parnell. Perhaps you've heard of me. Parnell, uh, Fur Trading Company? That's right. And I've heard of you. I, uh, used one of your hide stations once when I was gutting a hunting expedition. I thought you might have. You can go now, John. Why are you kidnapping, Parnell? Kidnapping? Mm hmm Well, let us say, Mr. Daly, that I sent for you. Because I know everything that's happened to you uh, since you arrived in Abilene. Everything? Including your marriage. But we'll, uh, we'll talk over some coffee. Thank you. I see you haven't eaten all your meals at a chuck wagon. I've mingled. Your appreciation of the finer things ought to fit in well with your... with your wife's culture. You know her? 
Oh, yes. And speaking of her culture, Cheyenne can be a superb lady in a ballroom. Indeed, even on a wagon train. Uh, she's come a long way. From a red man's teepee to, well, you might say to a, to a palace. What'd you say her name is? Are you telling me, Mr. Daly, that you don't know whom you married? All I know is that her name is Julia. She's the widow of a Boston man, the mother of two small children. She really took you in, didn't she? It's amazing how clever she is. What are you driving at? Who is she? Relax, my friend. Lee, the coffee. Mr. Daly, your wife's name is Cheyenne Julia O'Malley. She's the offspring of a, of a shrewd Irish fur trader and an Indian princess, daughter of a Cheyenne chief. That's why she's known as Cheyenne. Her tribal name is Princess White Deer. And Mr. Daly, she's certainly never married any Boston man. In fact, she was never married at all. Go on. Well, her father built O'Malley Mercantile and Fur Trading, which has virtually cornered the buffalo hide market. It's a large order. Sounds impossible. Well, he did it through his squaw man treaties with the Cheyennes and his daughter's blood privileges. Never any raids on their wagon trains or hide stations or company stores. With all that, uh, why are a rush into marriage? Well, she had to, to keep all that wealth and power. It was in the old man's will. He wanted to make sure that Cheyenne got married like any normal woman. What are you driving at, Porno? You. You can take over, O'Malley Mercantile, luck, stock, and barrel. Anytime you want to catch up with that wagon train. And that, Mr. Daly, is a husband's right. There's no other law, either white man's or Indian's. What are you figuring this deal? I want safe passage through Indian territory for my company's freight, traders, and hide stations. Get me the same treaties that she has. Why should I? If the satisfaction of letting your wife know that you outsmarted her by staying alive to exercise your rights isn't enough for you, Mr. Daly, you can walk right out that door. Just how far do you think I'd get? You'll never know. Until you try it. Well, I've had one bushwhacking today. I don't think I'll chance another. Oh, I'm glad we understand each other. I'll meet you in Sheridan at the end of the O'Malley Trek. You can bring the Indian treaties to me at the Grover Hotel. Lee. See that Mr. Daly and his companion have a good pack horse and ample supplies. I assume with the law on your trail, you won't risk letting your wife know that she's not a widow until those wagons are well out of this territory. You can start assuming that I'm not stupid. While he's about those supplies, I could use a gun. Yes, I was just about to order it. Lee, let Mr. Daly pick the weapon he wants from the gun room. Oh, and see that he has an escort to escort him out of town on the right trail. Uh, just until you're out of line of that posse. You've uh, thought of everything, haven't you? Of course, Mr. Daly. You're my biggest interest at the moment. What makes you think you can trust me? I'm sure you're a man of your word. Goodbye. Oh, and uh, good luck with Mrs. Daly. See you in Wyoming. I know this is an unusual assignment for you, my friend. Instead of doing away with someone, I want you to protect him, to make sure he gets to Sheridan, Wyoming alive. However, he must know that he's being guarded. This man would not like it. Who is he? He's a man who broke jail in Abilene yesterday, called Steve Daly. Where do I find him? He's on his way with his pal to join the O'Malley Mercantile's wagon train, heading northwest. Certain interests in Abilene want him dead. I want him alive. It's worth $5,000 to me. 5000 Well, this gives him a 50-50 chance. I don't pay off on 50-50 chances, Mr. Carp. Only if Daly's alive when that wagon train reaches Wyoming. Oh, if he ain't dead, hmm? If I do keep him alive, where do I collect? I'll be at the Grover Hotel in Sheridan. Mm-hmm. Also, Mr. Cobb, 
I want Mr. Daly to stay healthy on this wagon trip. That's important, too. Very important. All right, Mr. Parnell. We'll see you. about a fugitive. I've got to forget him. See me, Mr. Peters? Yep. I want to know what's eating Cheyenne. She ain't been the same since we left Abilene. She loved her father. It wasn't easy to bury him. Well, you don't have to tell me that. But this is something different. Something that isn't natural for her, even though she is a woman. You sure something else didn't happen to her back there besides burying her paw? It's always hard to really know what she's thinking. You can say that again. But if there's anybody who's got her number, it's you. Even better than me. And I've been with her since she was weaned. I wonder what's eating her. You ask Cheyenne if you want to know that. I don't know better than to try to get anything out of you. Go on, get back there where you belong. That Indian blood always has give her more confounded meanness than anything in pants that ever lived. She ain't a woman. She's something made out of fire and brimstone. Ah, oh, you're wrong, Tex. You take another look. She's a woman, all right. Nothing that nature and a good man couldn't harness. If you're figuring on falling in love with her, kid, just take another look at that giant buck engine. Then get smart and change your mind or pack your gear and move on. Yeah. Sure is a lot of engine. I've seen him break a man's back as easy as she cracks that whip. And where do you see when she's really got something to crack it at? Okay, okay. You've changed my mind for me, old timer. But I sure hope I'm around when the right man shows up. Yanks her off her high horse. Well, what did Lem want with you? You're not beholden to the wagon boss, and he knows it. He sees you troubled. He asked what happened in Abilene, besides putting your father to rest. No, I didn't tell him. Your marriage is your business. But Pinehawk knows why your heart is troubled. You know now you found the man you want, a man who helped you, and you let him go to his death. You had nothing to lose helping me. He was a criminal, tried and due to hang. But since you presumed to read my mind, I bought his freedom. I was a fool. Lamb. Get the wagons rolling. Tell the men if they don't make Low Creek Station in two weeks, they'll get docked. Two weeks? You heard me. Why, honey? Now, don't start your belly aching, Luke. You like her, money. And you heard what she said. Come on. Get it going. Come on. Fire! Eat. Wake up. Huh? Do you sleeping on your own time. Get that team rolling. Well, sure, honey. Sure. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, Steve, when are you going to quit stalling and catch us up with your wagon train? Well, maybe today. Guess it's not right. Why not let my wife know she's not a widow? What you told me about her, she might be the minute you meet her face to face. Well, I figure it's going to be more interesting than fatal. I wasn't thinking of hurrying on account of her. It's that crooked judge. If he wants you dead, he ain't stopped trying to find a way. I'll bet you he ain't. You expecting somebody, mister? Could be. Know how you feel. Been there myself. How'd you happen to hit our camp? Smell that bacon cooking from over yonder as I was passing by. Kind of a second country, ain't it, for a man to be just passing by? I ain't got a pack horse because mine pulled a picket pin two days back. Been traveling real short on grub, too. Climb down and have some breakfast with us. Glad to have you. Thanks. Coffee smells real good. Well, my name's uh, Daly, Steve Daly. This is Poto. Carp's mine. Slow carp. Slow carp. I heard about a slow carp. He's a hired gunslinger, Steve. A low-down horse thief and road agent. Your pal's got something there, except they've never been able to hang any of it on me. Men have got rights to their questions. So have you, Mr. Daly? We don't want no low-down horse, David. Hold it, Poto, hold it. He didn't have to give his right name, did he? No. Well, then I guess he's not going to bushwhack us or steal our horses. Well, come to think of it, uh, I guess not. Sit down, Carb. Photo's <laughs> just a little nervous over a certain situation that'll be handled all right. Where are you heading? Well, a couple of friends of mine got a hunting job there for me. Supply game meat for the hotel. It's a long way to be making a loan. Well, I don't figure in being alone pretty soon. How do you expect to do that in this lonesome country? Heard in Abilene that Mally Mercantile's got a wagon train on the trail. Think maybe I can catch up and get a job with them. Stick with us, I'll get you that job. You got a connection with this O'Malley outfit? Well, let's just say I have a little interest in it. Uh, Poto and I were delayed in Abilene. Yeah, we sure was. According to the uh, schedule, the wagon train's just ahead. We ought to catch up with it today. Suits my plans fine, thanks. Just uh, one catch, you're gonna have to change that name of yours, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, might as well hang a sign on your back. A uh house -huh, Slim Kramer. That sounds good to me. Dandy, wouldn't it, if they were giving my elegant competitors some more trouble? I can just see John Parnell's face when he tells me about it in Sheridan. You could stop it. And why should I? Let Parnell and the others take care of themselves like my father did. They've stopped the wagons. And for what, when we've got a schedule to meet? Sorry about all your trouble, ma'am, having to bury your son. But it's downright against company orders what you're asking me. But please, you must help me through to my husband in Sheraton. He settled some land for us, but he's down sick. He needs me. Sorry about your misfortune, but I admire your spunk. However, it's against the policy of our company to indulge in the misfortunes of settlers. We're in a business, a commercial business, and we won't be saddled with the frailties of women. I know you must be Miss O'Malley. But please, you're a woman, too. Lem, get her a team of fresh horses and fix her up with supplies. And see that she gets a couple of men to escort her back to Abilene. But hurry it up. 
Just a minute. All right, ma'am, don't you worry. My uh, wife, Mrs. Steve Daly, has forgotten that this is one of the policies of our company, changed before the train left Abilene. Oh, no. Yes, Steve. Get down, give the lady a hand. Thank you, Mr. Daly. My name is Sarah Mason. Nice to have you aboard, ma'am. I uh, take it you're the wagon boss? Yep, that's me, Lem Peters. All right, Lem, as soon as Mrs. Mason's wagon is organized, put it in the middle of the train where we can keep an eye on it. Sure, I guess it's official. Unless I hear something to the contrary. You won't, it's official. Nobody gives orders in this outfit but me. That was before you became Mrs. Steve Daly. All right, let him get going. Looks like the judge helped you after all, Mr. Daly. But I'm telling you to pile on your horse and get out of here before I rip you to shreds. Children and I will pray for you. All right, fellas, let's get rolling. Remember, Mrs. Mason here, we now have a lady aboard. Hello! need for Pinehawk to watch over Cyan at night anymore. I'm too sleepy to wait any longer. I'm going to turn in. Hey, Pete. Huh? You going to sleep under the wagon, same as usual? No, sir. Not tonight. I'll soon bed down under a volcano. <clears throat> Good night, Steve. Night, Pete. Know what you mean, Pete. Good night, fellas. You know, she ain't left that wagon since you joined up this afternoon. Guess I ought to warn you, son. She don't give in easy. So I've heard. Good night, son. Odo. Hi, Lem. Good night, old timer. Well, I guess from here on out, I'll be sleeping with strangers. Good night, Steve. Good night, Poto. Good luck. Five will get you ten, he gets shot before he can crawl over the tailgate. Huh? I'll take that bet. You're on. What do you think you... I don't think I know. Going to bed. You're not going to sleep with me. Why not, Sligo? You took me for better or for worse. I took nothing but your name. That's too bad. The trouble is, you don't know what you're missing. Why, you do? Give me some of that pillow. <laughs> That's my Steve. Cough up. <laughs> With pleasure, kiddo. Hallelujah. It finally happened. What a man. That's my Steve. <laughs> <laughs>
Stop what you're doing. All of you. I want your attention. You too, Pete. Sure, honey. In spite of what Mr. Daly said and did yesterday, I'm still the boss of this outfit. All we know, honey, is when you finally woke up, you sure picked yourself a heap of man. <laughs> Shut up, all of you, and listen to me. Daly is my husband, and that's all he is. O'Malley Mercantile is my business. I'm still running it and paying your wages. Sure, we know, honey. You're fired, Pete. Pack your gear and get out of here. You got your orders from me this morning. Those are the ones you'll be paid for. Pete, you take over Poto's job. He'll be driving the boss wagon from here on out. Just a minute. I said he's only my husband. Apparently, he needs some convincing. Pinehawk, convince him. Cheyenne, you can't do this. Hold it, Indian. I think you'd better wipe off the war paint, seeing as how I sort of got a personal interest in Mr. Daly's welfare. Thanks, Slim, but uh, you can put up the hardware. If I have to whip an Indian to convince my wife that I'm wearing the pants in this outfit, I might as well get started. Well, that's the way you want it. Steve, don't be crazy. That's the way I want it. slaughter. No man's going to make me his slave. What's the matter with me, anyway? Why did I forget it? Of course. My Indian blood brothers won't let me down. Right now, the Cheyenne chiefs are riding to gather at our station for our initial powwow. That'll do it. Yes, sir, Mr. Steve Daly. You're going to find out pretty quick now just who is boss in this outfit.
remember what I told you. My father is dead, that's all. My marriage is none of their business. Did you hear me? I heard you. Sure glad to get them supplies in time for a change, Mr. Daly. Sure, Mr. Trimble, sure. Well, those Cheyennes sure seem real friendly, Steve. If they weren't, I wouldn't be on this job with my wife and kids. Used to run a station for Parnell fur trading till the same bunch of Cheyennes burned us out, hides and all. If I wasn't friendly with them personal like, that I had my family scalps dangling from their belts right now. Steve, you ain't going over there, are you? I wouldn't if you don't mind me saying so, Mr. Daly. Cheyenne knows best how to handle them. Well, I'm sure not going over there uninvited. Meeting with you, my blood brothers. White Deer has had much sorrow and much happiness. She has lost by death her father, but gained by marriage a husband. Husband, come on wagon train? Yes, he's here, over there by the station. Want to see, husband? My people, always in the past, White Deer has received you and talked with you with her father. And since his illness before death, she has powered with you alone. There is no change. Want to see husband? Get husband! Kistowa, yi kuyewina. Onite. We will make power with men, white dear. Go back with other squaws. White deer understands. Looks like they've thrown her off the board of directors. How'd you do? Sure looked plenty peaceable. I did all right, but uh, my wife had her feathers centered a bit. Yeah, yeah, I see the little maverick's madder in a pistol. Yeah. I wonder what you'll try to pull now. Nothing you can't handle. Dear Paul, I want you to handle something quietly for me. Tell United States Marshal Hendricks I want him at my house in Sheridan by the time I arrive. You know our schedule. Tell him I will have a prize fugitive in tow for him. One I know he's looking for. Thanks, Cheyenne. Said you, said you wanted to see me. Yes, Steve. Sit down. Well, what do you want to see me about this time? You. And me. You and me. That uh, and is certainly a novelty. You're right in feeling as you do, Steve. 
But as for me, I guess I've forgotten some of the things that really count. Really? Oh, don't laugh at me, please. Hear me out. I'm listening. I guess I've been an ungrateful idiot, but I'm smart enough to know when I'm licked. I'm glad you took the whip away, because I've decided that now that I'm married, it's time I took off the buckskins and, and became a woman. You know, I might buy that. After you tell me how you're going to live up to it. I won't interfere with your bossing me outfit anymore, I promise. I'll take my place as your wife, and that's all. However, until I've proven that you can trust me and we can somehow adjust our private lives, I think you'll agree that our company's affairs must go on productively. You see, our interests are so vast that when we're away, they're handled by the bank in Abilene. Yeah, I know. I, uh, made it my business to find out from Lynn. <laughs> yes, of course. That old rascal's been conniving to bring me to my senses ever since you whipped Pinehawk. <laughs> None of the things he told me about you. Like, way back there when you were a half pint and he gave you your first bath in a real tub. <laughs> that ought to be interesting now. Well, you would tease me about that. Listen to me, Steve, this is important. I must dispatch a letter to Paul Morgan at the bank. Mm -hmm. You see, ever since I've had to take over from my father, I, I've never really been able to handle the men. Never been sure of our schedules. But now you've changed all that. And I've got to let him know the tentative date's are final. Here. Read this and you'll see there's nothing in it to hurt you. I think I know what you mean, honey. Now read it. All right, if you insist. Dear Paul, I find my fears unwarranted. We have made up the time lost in Abilene because the men are wonderful this trip, really cooperating. I have to hide there per present schedule. Best wishes, Cheyenne. Well, I've read it. Now what? Will you call Pine Hawk while I get it in an envelope? He's waiting. Yeah, sure. All right, Pine Hawk, come on. Take this to Paul at the bank. And take the trail to Sheridan and get the house ready for us. And tell everybody to be at the big party. I want them all to meet Steve. Then I'll meet you with the carriage the same as always? That's right. Now make tracks. Oh, it's wonderful. You don't know how tired I am of trying to do a man's job. I ought to hold you for a while. Oh. First time I've seen you smile. What's so funny? Love. What do you mean? Well, I'm glad it never hit me. I like it alone. <laughs> you find yourself a little uh, redheaded maverick like I got, you'll change your mind. You'll find out love isn't a one-way street. And you'll find it out on my terms. in Sheridan in about a week. Wagons will bypass it and go into the main station at the fort. Yeah, I know. Yeah, your woman invited me to that party she's thrown for you. Meet all them big wigs. Yeah. Town. Heard about that shindig. Look, uh, 
You're going to give up that hunt job and stay on with it slow? You've had a month to think about it. Ain't decided. Ain't in Sheridan yet. Take your time. Oh, I will. Stubborn jackass. I don't know what to do, Pluto. I don't even know if I can get him to come to my party. You just leave it to me, honey. I'll get him there. He's got no call to treat you this way. I know what it is. He's afraid of hurting me and the company because he's a fugitive, isn't he? What do you mean, fugitive? He's got that paper, ain't he? Paper? What do you mean? Yeah, the one the judge gave him to marry you, calling off that hanging birdie. Oh, that one. Yes, I'd forgotten. Oh, Steve keeps that in a safe place? Don't you worry, honey. It's never out of his pocket. I just want him to be safe always. But I wouldn't mention this little talk we had, Podo. Don't you think he might object to our discussing his business? He don't have to know everything. Now you stop being unhappy.
Steve, don't you think we ought to... Simmer down, Porter. We're going to make that party all right. Keep her guessing and she'll appreciate us more when we get there. Mistress, I'm here, Indian. Cheyenne's invitations were for 7 o'clock, Mr. Parnell. You're much too early. Just tell her I'm here. You are early, John. Or is it because you couldn't wait to ask me again? Not exactly, my dear. I think that perhaps this year it isn't necessary for me to ask you to amalgamate with my company. Oh? Not even to give me the pleasure of turning you down again? Yeah, it's hard to deny you anything, Cheyenne. Believe me, it is. But I don't understand. Why? Because this year things seem to be different. Different? Of course, you're joking. No, my dear. I'm very serious. I think your... your husband might influence your judgment in my favor. My husband? Yes, of course. I knew it would be all over town by the time we arrived. I knew it before you left Abilene. And later, when your husband broke jail, I arranged for his escape out of the territory. Catch up with your wagon train. That's very interesting, John. And I can guess why you did it. But I see my husband is coming, so you wait right in here till I get back. Because I prefer to hear all the details from you. Don't go away. Find out the door. Steve. Steve, you did come. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I'm so glad, darling. Come along and see the surprise I have, especially for you. Fine, Ox, see that Porter makes himself at home. What, uh, what kind of a surprise? Come along, darling. You'll see. Steve? This is United States Marshal Hendricks from Abilene and his deputy. Your wife sent for me daily through Morgan at the bank in Abilene. She didn't report you were married, but I'm um, taking you back to Abilene for that hanging. Well, I guess I should have straightened my wife out, too. Especially since she sent you on such a long trek. It's funny that Judge Carr didn't, uh... You were saying something, Daly? Nothing. All right, Luke, get him on. Let's get going. I don't think so, Marshal. Neither do you. Come on, Steve, let's get out of here. Be smart, Marshal. Wait a while before you stick your nose outside this door. Steve. I know about the Marshal. I could not let Cyan do such a bad thing. Steve, what happened to your judge's paper? I think I got an idea. Thanks, Pine Hawk. Let's go, photo. Send them away. Now, what happened? The 
What's she so hysterical about? I only know, Mr. Parnell, she said there's to be no party. Round up slow, Corp, and wait for me here. Where are you going? Back to the party. What? Why not? I'm the host. Took you so long. Dirty's paper. Where is it? Now, darling, you don't think I went to all that trouble stealing it just to give it up? Don't worry, sweetheart. I won't let them hang you. If you promise to be a good boy and not try to run everything so we can live happily ever after. The further south, the better. Texas! No, that makes sense to me. How about you, Slow? Want to come with us? Doesn't figure. Just doesn't figure at all. What doesn't figure? Man running so far away from something he wants so bad. I got my reasons. It, uh, it has to do with a piece of paper. You coming with us? Well, I'd like to well enough, but... Got something to do in town. Give me, uh, say an hour, maybe less. I might come back and truck along with you if you still want to go. We'll be here. See you then.
Goodbye, Steve. He left. I don't think he'll return. I'll have the horses ready for us by the time you've eaten. The wagons will be waiting at the pass. Wake up, Porter. You uh, ready to take off now? Well, maybe after you hear what I'm going to tell you, you won't want to take off. You know the paper the judge gave you? I just turned it over to Parnell. You what? Mm-hmm. Right now, Parnell's on his way to your woman to make a deal with her to buy a pack for half interest in the Mallee Mercantile. Yeah? If I know your woman, she'll make the deal to save your skid. Now, you still want to go to Texas. I think Parnell could be mighty convincing. Not with my freedom, it can't. That paper belongs to me. Hmm. I picked up myself 10000 in the deal. Come on, photo. <laughs> Love. I knew if you came back, it would be here. John Parnell is with Cheyenne now. You and uh, Puto keep me covered from the outside. I don't think you have much to worry about, my lady. We should do very well as partners. Parnell Company and O'Malley Mercantile can become a powerful combine. You would stick the Parnell before the O'Malley. Now give me Steve's paper. With pleasure, partner. You're not bargaining with my hide for anything. Get out of here. Leave my wife and our company alone. You have the advantage of me, Daly. I have no gun. Come here, you. 